So the final thing I want to demonstrate with ZFS is encryption and this has only just appeared um, within the last year or so on ZFS on Linux. Um, it, it appeared with version 0.8 um, and it ZFS supports encryption using various methods um, of encryption at the data set level so these apply this encryption applies to the data set and it's a little bit convoluted but I think you'll understand why when you see how how it works um, but it does work quite well and what we do to create a an encrypted file system is that we have to specify certain parameters that when we create the file system to turn on the encryption and specify other details about the encryption. So we do ZFS create, then we specify an option with lowercase o that we want to use encryption. So we turn that on, if we can spell encryption right. We spec another, specify another option called key format and um, if we leave the yeah key format is passphrase there are several other key formats but for this demonstration passphrase is good enough and then we just specify the pool and the name of the data set so I'm going to call mine encrypted because it's so original so now it's asking for the passphrase so I'll put in my passphrase, so um, let's create one and I've put in a very short passphrase and it's warned me that it's too short. I don't think it does any other checking as to whether it's got characters or numbers or uppercase or anything like that. It just looks at the size of it. So I'm going to give it one. Um, so that's a nine character passphrase I've put in and you can see it's finished if we do ZFS list you can see it's at the top there it's created a uh, an encrypted um, data set and if you use something like OD after you've copied some stuff onto the data set or even if you transmit it to a file using the ZFS send and examine it you'll see that there's nothing there you can recognize at all. It does does do a good in, job encrypting. There are various encryption methods, as I say. Um, if you uh, when you create it, uh, if you leave the encryption empty, it will tell you. Okay, it will tell you what types of encryption there are. So I've used on nice and simple to remember. I think that by default uses this encryption method here which looks to be the the best of the bunch but there are other methods there that may be quicker to compute and it might be why there's like 128 bit, 192 bit, AES and so on. So, so yeah we've got a encryption encrypted data set now and we can copy stuff to it so let's copy our share data into that partition I won't bother using the user for this demonstration but it would quite easily work within the user there's no no problems with that at all so I'll just copy some data onto that Just leave it at that, set of this list. So you can see there's 45 megabytes of data on there. Now, um, if you export a, a pool with an encrypted data set on, there's a bit of a method to import it. You have to um, uh, actually mount it manually because you need to specify the password to access it. So if I export test okay we're still logged in here to the directory yep ok 
okay so the test is not mounted or the sorry the uh, test pool is not active it's exported I'll just do status to check it so if I now import the file uh, the pool as it would do if it was imported at boot time for example and now do ZFS list you'll see the oh that's interesting it has actually loaded it now when I was testing this it didn't okay yeah that that's right it creates the this shows the data sets on the I keep forgetting this it shows the data sets that are on the pool but they're not actually mounted so you can see the encrypted data set is not actually mounted so it does exist and that's why we need to mount it manually to get access it, to it. So we need to do import with um, minus L. Uh, so let's, um, I can either mount this with the mount, ZFS mount command, which I shall do first. Um, oh, that's shown us the ones that are available um, or I need to do is it minus L test stroke encrypted and then we need to put in the password it's successful if I do DF minus H you can see the um, encrypted partition uh, data set has now been uh, made accessible to the file system. And there's the data in it. And as I said, you can actually get it to mount at import time. Uh, let's export this first. So I said pull import minus minus help. There's an option here. Yeah, there it is there, minus L again. So said pull import minus L. And I want to import the test pool. And it's imported uh, and mounted. It's imported the pool. It's mounted the other directories. And now it's asking us the passphrase for the encrypted um, data set so we can put that in and it will it actually tells us how many keys are loaded so if you've got multiple encrypted partitions it will ask the passphrase for all of them and it will show you how many keys have been loaded successfully um, for each password that's put in so df minus h and you can see it's mounted all the partitions including the one that was encrypted well, that's all I've got to show for ZFS file system. I hope you agree now that I've given a quick demonstration of some of the features available, how it is such a powerful file system, and more to the point, how it can protect your data with um, you know, careful use of it, um, and how it, uh, you know, how it manages your data. So thank you very much for watching these videos and I really hope you found them useful and I hope you um, take time to have a play with ZFS yourself and maybe, who knows, you may be even using it yourself. So thank you very much. If you enjoyed the video, um, I'd appreciate a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you want to hear about more of these videos.